wanted to talk about a few different things today. You guys had sent in some comments and frustrations on um, certain things in your business. So we've got four things to go over today, but what we want to do is really make this participatory. Um, have you guys turn your cameras on? Have you guys unmute yourself? I see some really, really smart people in here. Adam, Adam No is here. There's Judy. I just saw her pop on. Um, the goal of a mastermind is to, um, to participate, to give us your thoughts, to give us your concerns. Um, if you've ever read the book, Think and Grow Rich, um, the author, Napoleon Hill, talks about the fact that having masterminds changed the trajectory of his life because there is not one smartest person in the room. Um, you get smarter by picking up golden nuggets, even from a brand new agent that's never been in the industry, depending on their background, where they've been in life, um, you know, they've got great ideas. So I see some of my wonderful friends, Christy Wallace. Hi. Um, <clears throat> oh, there's Julie. Hello, Julie. So I got Judy on. I got Ashley on. They're going to help me facilitate today because my voice is basically my doctor said, stop talking. And I'm like, how do I stop talking as an agent? It's just hard. <clears throat> so um, today we're going to talk about outbound prospecting, how you do it. I think a lot of times, you know, there's always a, everybody has a certain personality style. So for me, outbound prospecting was really, really hard in the beginning. Um, I was very relational, but once I started doing it a different way, I decided that I wanted results and um, I started doing it uh, more aggressively. And, and so, but everybody does it differently. So Ashley's going to speak a little bit about that today of how she does it and Judy as well, who's a coach for 20 years. Um, and Ashley is one of our top agents on call group. We're going to talk about lead trackers for non-techie people. Who's very, who's non-techie on this call? Like literally tech just scares them. Yeah. Julie, Judy, I'm the same. Like I am a notebook, note card girl. Um, I've got my million dollar box, which I'm going to show you guys today of how I built a million dollar business with a stupid little box that cost 10 bucks. Um, we're going to talk about pre-qualifying today, meeting and prepping for buyers or sellers. What do we do before we get out to that appointment? Because a lot of us fly by the seat of our pants and then we get there and we're not really ready and that's just not good. And then the listing process, what's yours? Don't be shy and say, you know what? My listing process is I go out, I do my comps, I meet with them, I talk about their family, their dog, I build rapport, I give them my advice and I'm out the door. It's not scripted, it's just who I am, it's natural. That was my listing presentation for seven years. That's okay. There's no shame in that game. But then I changed it and it became better because it was a results driven listing presentation. So um, I'm going to start by um, unmuting Judy and Ashley um, since they're going to be helping us facilitate. But let's talk go. about outbound prospecting. Um, I don't know who wants to start, but two different personalities, both high D's, Judy and Ashley. So they like results, but Ashley is much more. Um, uh, relational. She doesn't like to, you know, upset people, interrupt people and feel like she's bothering them where Judy's much more of a driver. Like, I don't care. I wanted the result. I'm not looking for a relationship. So how do you want to handle that? Judy, maybe start. And then Ashley can give us her, her take on it. Okay, good. All right. Yes. Yeah, so very true. Um, I am uh, result driven when I started a, about a month or two ago, <clears throat> the first appointment I went on, I didn't have anything that I needed as far as what I would normally do for a listing appointment, but I went anyway. So I'm not con always concerned about like, is it perfect? I'm just going to go do it. So, um, but as far as prospecting, I, I think what you need to do is you need to look at what the lead sources are. And we started to talk about that last week and we specifically talked about expired, but we went through the whole list. You need to decide which one which one you want to dominate. But as a coach, I've always said you should spend your time in every lead source because the market changes. And so when the market changes, you want to be as good at expireds as you are at FISBOs or at just listed just solds when there were no expireds. So it, for my business and the way I coach my clients is I want you eventually to be in every lead source. So whether it's you know, if you're talking to 10 people or 20 people, you're going to, you're going to make so many of them each part of that group. And you start out with your SOI. How many of your SOI do you need to, to deal, to um, talk to each day? And then you fill it in with the rest. 
I have a lead sheet, or I'm sorry, a prospecting sheet that I've made um, from a combination of things throughout the year. So I have my one week business plan at the top and I have my contacts at the bottom. So you can see I'm very technical. I didn't even put this up on the thing. <laughs> Great. <laughs> but so I know that each day I need to make 25 contacts. A couple of days I made more. Yesterday I made less. I try not to prospect on Fridays, but today I have to do 10. And I do 25 a day, whether I've made more the day before or not because I want my muscle to be that I talk to 25 people a day. That's just the simple part of it. And so for any of you that haven't been prospecting, what I can tell you is, is get started, do some of it. And no, we talked about last week, well, how many numbers it takes to get those appointments. So remember you do your business plan if you've done one and most people are talking to 2000 to 4,000 people a year, that's the plan. But their plan is, is to only out of those two or 4,000 people to only do 12, 20, 50, 100 deals. That means they're talking to 3,900 people, even the top producers who are doing 100. They're talking to 3,900 people that told them no. So know that it's the accumulation. It's the accumulation. Every no is going to bring you to that yes. And I know that's really cliche, but it's true. And the more you do it, the more fun it is because then you see the results. So I actually put for myself on my sheet how many leads I'm going to get and how many appointments I've taken. So this week, I've already got five, nine, 12 leads and three appointments set. One of them canceled. That's okay. It happens. That's why you need to have as many of those done as you can. So have a plan, know what you want, and then track it. So that you can see, am I doing what I'm supposed to? Because I have to tell you, the last two weeks, I didn't do what I was supposed to either. This week, I was determined. I was hitting my 100. Okay, so start somewhere. It doesn't have to be 100 contacts. What is your goal? Okay, so that's kind of how I would start out with the whole prospecting aspect of it is get started and then have someone to hold you accountable. Could be me, could be Tina, could be your, uh, a person in the office. It could be, I, I think you shouldn't do a spouse. I think it, it becomes a little bit wonky. Some people do that, um, but find somebody that you trust that you can have them hold you accountable. So, so that's my quick two cents on prospecting. I love that, Judy. And um, do you notice you guys, how guys and gals, how she is just so, you know, organized and militant. This is her business. She's going to grow it. And for those that don't know, Judy, um, been a coach for 20 years we're putting her to the test. She just got into production. Again. So I remember the first week you were in production, you called me and you went, Hey, this shit still works. And what I'm doing is, is what I've been coaching people on. It works. I got an expired and tell them your goal for the year, 25 contacts a day. And notice how she's going to know her numbers. How many units is that? And how many, how much in GCI? Mm -hmm. So it's uh, 36 deals this year. I uh, luckily am in Utah and the sales average sales price is 650. So 36 deals and that's a gross of 648. Six four six hundred forty eight thousand dollars. I don't know about you guys, but put in the chat box if you'd like to make 600. Put a yes in the chat box. Who wants so to make it? Yeah, back in Michigan, I was right? selling over 80 homes a year and not making 648,000. Exactly, exactly. I think when I left Michigan, Judy, I was selling homes for 60 grand. I know. Um, yeah, I love it. But but do you notice how Judy is an entrepreneur? She's a business coach. She got into production with a plan that she's ex executing every day. And people hate that word prospecting. I call it business building time. I got to build that darn business. So Alison, can you do me a favor on page 105 of our manual? We have this daily log sheet. Maybe you could take a photocopy of it, put it in our um, Freedom Builders group for everybody. Would you yeah, guys? I have, a, I have a copy of it. I'll put it in the chat. All right. Put yes in the chat. If you want that, we'll get it in the Freedom Builders group. So this was a saving grace. I had it in digital form, but you saw Judy had it in um, uh, paper or written down on her little paper there. So thank you, Judy. That's such a great ad. Um, and then, all right, Ash, can I, go ahead. Can yeah, I say one? Yep. And just like uh, Tina had mentioned, I'm a, you know, a driver. 
I learned early on, I had to know my numbers. I don't get crazy with graphs and it's just, and it's funny when I talk to Tina um, and I'm going to be using this, she said, gosh, you're just keeping it simple. So kiss, just remember, keep it simple. And I want to come up with a different word than stupid. So if you guys can help me with what to use instead of stupid, because I, that's just not sitting well with me, but keep it simple sister. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Right. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Um, so that know that you don't have to be that, um, the CFO, I mean, you, you are a CFO of your own company, right? You're going to be that, you know, your financial person, but know what you need to know and let everybody else do the other hard stuff. Just know those basic numbers. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and, and the most important point that she made is treat it like a business. It, I don't care if you're on a team. There's a lot of people here that are on my team. You're still a business owner. You're leveraging a team and you're, you're here for different reasons, but you got to know those numbers. I mean, I can't stress that enough. And, and when you're a results driven person, high analyticals are very results driven. So are our um, uh, drivers. Sometimes in between we can, you know, our expressives, anytime I'm talking to expressive, I'm like, what are your numbers? They're like, I don't know. I just go out and meet people and I close deals. I'm like, well, that's cool too, but let's get your business on track. And that's my expressive, Ashley. Where is she? Let's get her on here. Joe looks like he has a question real quick. Oh, Joe. Well, before, yeah, Joe, go ahead and ask. Yeah, thank you, Allison. Hey, everybody. I hope everybody's having a great, uh, productive week. Yeah, I would just say um, we recently, you know, we tried different things. We tried the manual, write it down on a pad. Let's do a spreadsheet, that kind of thing. And I felt like we had, you know, things in all different locations. So we recently, um, I was uh, grateful enough to get a call with Kenny uh, of Fast Real Estate out on the West Coast. Um, I just, I threw a note to him after a call he did when he was talking about Monday.com. And he took time out of his day and actually said, I, yeah, I said, hey, who on your team can help me? And he said, no, 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 just get on my calendar. And so he spent time with me and I was blown away. He showed me his sales tracker, you name it. So we now have automations to where we've got a sales tracker set up and we, we create a form to where our team enters all new deals into a form like you would fill out, you know, a dot form, whatever. That immediately pushes it to our sales tracker. And it labels it, whether it's, you know, just starting out, pending, closing, whatever it is. And as those numbers come in, I have charts that show me pending, closed, you know, last year, this year, that kind of thing. So whatever works for you, my point is, is whatever works for you, do it. But you got to get some consistency and some discipline behind it. We recently switched to Monday.com just through his, you know, showing me those things. We're super impressed right now. And I like that it is simple and it gives me a full overview of my business with one snapshot. I love that. I love that. And that's, you made such a valid point. Just do something, do, do it however your brain works, but do something. We just, um, I'll just share for our business, you know, we're running a team and we were running a team very autonomous. Hey, this is your job. Go do it. You know, and everyone had 52 jobs and we just did it as a team. We had all the balls in the air. Shit's falling everywhere, but we're keep pushing, right? But then we said, okay, what got us here is not going to get us there. Let's implement different systems. And now I'm like robotic going into every category of my business to just recalibrate it and just make it better and better and better. You got to do that when, and it's painful when you're big, it's painful when you're small, but if you start when you're smaller, it's going to be so much easier as you grow and then treat it like a business. Thank you, Joe. That was a great share. Um, yeah, and I think the other point that he made was really important is you got to find what's right for you. So try it, give it enough time to try it. I yes. know I probably spent, I don't know, hundreds, if not close to a thousand dollars on different. Cause I still like, I, I do things electronically, but I also do like a paper day timer. So I kind of do a little bit of both and I spent a lot of money figuring out which one I liked. And now I have it. And so play around with it, but give it enough time. I'd say give it at least 30 days of what you're trying. I love it. I love it. And, and, and that talking about outbound prospecting, Judy calls expireds. She calls FISBOs. She calls past clients. She circle dials, meaning circle dials in neighborhoods around listings. That's what she does because she's a very high D and wants a quick result. I'm going to go to the people that are raising their hand and I'm going to get really good at those objections and I'm going to master them so I can make a 10, 15, $20,000 commission in one day. That's exciting to me. I don't know. I like to make money. So 
I'm going to learn the hardest part of the business first, and then the rest will just come easy. All right, where's my lovely dear friend, Ashley? Unmute yourself, my darling. Here comes the expressive driver who doesn't <laughs> want accountability, a sheet to track numbers, to make phone calls. So I know there's people on this call that are like me. So you have your people here. That's right. Um, Representing. You know, and I think, I mean, I've been with Tina for seven years. I was an admin. I've been in sales now for three years full time, but I also sold as an admin. And I would say that I'm a relationship builder. I'm good at cultivating my past clients. That is what I want to do. And that's where I'm going to focus my time. And I think sometimes we get so caught up. This is what I should do. This is what I should do. And it's not what I want to do. So I'm not going to do it because I should do it. So I think that was a big thing for us, right? I know I need a time block working on that. I've been in the office more. Look, here come things. I've got multiple listings coming. I've got multiple buyers that just popped in. But my thing is talking to people. It's networking with agents. It's my husband is the best advocate for me. I've gotten a lot of business from UNC Health, Wake Med. Okay, let's go. So it's who, who's going to be out there advocating for me? How do I provide the best level of service? So people want to refer me to everyone they know. And I would say about 75 my, of my 75 percent of my business last year was past client referrals, um, sphere. There was, you know, some team leads, but I really worked hard on, I'm texting them all the time. Hey, just drove by your house. You know, I was just thinking about you or sending them gift cards. So I think, you know, of course there's people that are going, well, I don't even have a past client database to pick from. Well, then go talk to people. I got a referral from the medical assistant at my doctor's office, sent it to an agent in Greensboro and got a check. So you've just got to have conversations. And for me, it's more about the fun conversations, getting to know them, providing value versus the calls. So I know people have built their business that way, but to me that, that just didn't feel like who I was. So there are other ways to build it. Cause I sold 29 homes last year. I sold 40 the year before, like you can do it, but you have to be consistent and you've got to provide that good level of service. Tell them why. Um, so first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you for fessing up to you that you don't like accountability and you don't like, oh, I'm, I'm very honest about what I don't do. Right. <laughs> she fessed up. It's not doing yeah. right. It's just your way. It's she's a yeah. stubborn girl, yeah, but, yeah. um, but the thing is, um, you're always touching your people. You are doing prospecting, just not in a consistent fashion. So for me, that would drive me crazy because I just want to get it done and know that it's done for her. She just does it all day, but tell them why you made a strategic decision to slow down your sales. Cause you went from 44 to 29. So you're not really selling people on weight. Maybe her process doesn't work, but it was strategic. Tell them why. Well, I mean, part of it was building, you know, my EXP organization and bringing agents and that I wanted to work with multiple people on my team. I, they're literally my best friends. Our kids have play dates. Like I'm walking in their front door after twice meeting them. So I love to teach. And because I did 150 deals a year as an admin for four, four and a half years, but seeing hundreds and hundreds of transactions, I'm able to give that information and coach them. Uh, because I love it. I'm on the phone 24 seven. My son is even like, why are you still on the phone now? Because I love to strategize and help people win offers and negotiate. So giving back and like bringing people into this group and just knowing more people that benefits, not only my clients, because I might get listings that are off market. It benefits the other people that I'm helping and giving them information and giving them another way forward. Um, obviously, clearly financial alignment is something that's huge because Technically, my husband could almost not work at this point because of the agents that we brought in and, you know, just training and support and coaching and just that community. So I have focused on that because I love, of course, meeting new people. That's what I want to do all day is talk to people. Um, so well, that you, was part of it. Yeah. You, she said to me one day, you came to me last year, beginning last year, like, I feel so exhausted, but I really want to focus on agent attraction and build my, my organization. And I mm -hmm. said, good, you should, because it's the number one thing I always say, people are going to be really pissed off at themselves if they don't mm -hmm. grow their business. And even as an, a single agent, you can grow an organization. So she focused. Now you have 60, you know, people in your 54. organization, yeah. 54, 54 mm -hmm. people in her organization. <laughs> That has been built, but she needed to take a step back in time to get some of her time back, which sacrificed a few of the deals, but look at what you're building. So three years from now, and that is three, 400 people, and it's, it's, it's a great income coming in. You'll be proud of that. So I think this year, and you're then another thing is, okay, what's 35, your goal? 
35. Okay. Yeah. And the more you do the activities, I mean, I was just talking to Danielle Harvey. I don't know if she's on the call, but it's like, she got a dialer and she's like, oh, this is just, I hate cold calling. But the minute she started doing an activity, other business called, right? Like people called on her sign or this past client in one of the neighborhoods she used to sell in because she was an onsite agent. It's just the activity. Like I got my mindset better and I'm going, okay, I'm in the office. I'm doing all these things. Well, now I have a listing coming for my husband's work. I met a buyer outside the house. I was showing it to someone else as the garage door is closing. I meet a buyer. He goes, are you the listing agent? I literally wrote the offer the next day and we're under contract. He had written 10 offers with someone else last year. So again, it's providing value and sticking with it and just going, well, what's the worst that happens? They like me or they don't. I kind of got over my needing ever. I mean, I still like everyone to like me. Tina knows that I'm very amiable in that sense. I don't want to disappoint people, but at the same time I go, I can provide value because of all the knowledge I have. And like, how do I give it to someone else? And Mike Ferry had that really good quote. If you don't take that listing, like you're disappointing that consumer, because if they get some terrible agent, you just, you've just done that to them. So it's my job to make sure I get the listing and then I help that buyer so we can secure the house. And I'll show you real quick. I know I'm talking a lot and maybe we can open it up to other people, but this is how dorky I am. I was an admin and I had to have my, you know, each page was a person because we had to keep track of all our people. So I literally made this myself. I put a piece of notebook paper here. I've got my prospect and like a couple homes, but literally every day I can flip through here. Well, I just added all these new ones in, but then I can see like their time frame. It's like Tina's box that she's probably going to show us what helped her build. But my mind is like this from my admin days when I had to keep track of 30 to 40 deals at a time. This is how my mind works. Maybe yours works in a CRM. And that's what we're talking about is what's right for Judy is not right for me. What's right for Tina might not be right for me, but find something that works and stick to it. And I'm like, well, the worst that happens is I try and it doesn't work. Exactly. And, and that might be giving techie people like Brandon's probably having heartburn. He's like, put those leads in a CRM for God. I do both. I do both. But in <laughs> my mind, I need to see it every day on paper that I can flip through because people will get lost in that online. We're online all the time. We're in our phone all the time. Like, can I have something where it's a little bit more paper relaxing? Paper. Who, who like loves paper? paper? Raise your hand so we can see you. You guys, like most real estate agents, I would say. Um, thank you, Ashley. I think that's great. Yeah, Brandon's like, uh. um, I definitely am all paper all the time, but I love spreadsheets. I just don't like like to fill them in. Um, I like to look at them. So, um, all right. Anybody else want to share, expand? Do they have a question? Tanya Paul, um, she's raising her hand. Come on, darling. No, it was, uh, I'm late. I was raising hand for saying I like paper. That's it. Oh, well, you know what, Tanya, since you're here, I just want to give her her kudos real quick. Tell them how long you've been in the business. Oh, you got to put me on the spot. Yes, I am real quick. And I want to see your face <laughs> too, but how long? Uh, um, well, I joined EXP about two and a half years ago. Before that, I was with Keller Williams. Okay. And what, how many homes had you sold when you joined us? Uh, oh, I'm really bad in counting numbers. I remember last year, 39 and the year before, probably 31, 32, something like that. Yeah. She came to us like this. I mean, you were just on fire and last year she sold 40 homes just by herself. Like she, you just really, we're going to do an interview with Tanya, but she's amazing to watch. So thank you for being here. I just wanted to give you a shout out. Um, um thank you so much. And I just wanted to say like, I'm very much similar to her well, and that's how I am like I then everything is all over I, I like to meet people I mean very much similar I'm hearing her I'm, not, I'm smiling to myself like oh my god there's that's another me. person like me well, there's lots of people <laughs> like and then the thing is yeah. you sold 30 homes and you did it with kind of yes we're all over the place so if we got a little bit more organized maybe we sell 10 or 15 more but if it feels terrible we're not going to do it so just again exactly. find what works for you especially being on call group right we've got We've got comparison, right? You have people that just joined the team. They're newer. You have seasoned agents. Like there's top agents that have been with me that sold 30, 40 more homes than me. Well, I'm in a different season. I do my business a different way. I can't compare myself to them. So everyone on this call is going, well, I want to do that or I need to do this, but it's what you want to do and feel comfortable with that. And hopefully that gives you um, the freedom to go, no, I can do it my way. And this is my business and it it's what I want. And I don't have to be like everybody else. Yeah, and, exactly. And if you guys want to get to a hundred transactions, maybe that's not a goal, but if, if you ever did, 
then you and Tanya would have to figure something out. Like I, I was forced into, I was more like you and then became more like Judy. Um, so I'm going to show everybody real quick and put your questions in a chat box too. If it just pops in your mind, that's the goal because Alice Ann is watching that chat box like a hawk. Um, and if you want to raise your hand and ask a question, do that too. Um, so I just want to show you guys my lead box, which Judy will probably laugh because you know what this is. Um, so this is our little Freedom Builders lead box. It's literally $5 at the store. So for all you people like Tanya and like Ashley who hate, you know, uh, CRMs, you're going to buy one of these. You're going to buy a bunch of little tabs. And in your tabs, it's going to say, I'm trying to get on camera. You're going to have January, February, and all your little tabs labeled. And in between these little tabs, you're going to have little index index cards. I mean, it sounds so elementary, right? But these little index cards. So let's say I'm doing my prospecting calls like a good girl, like Judy, because I'm keeping it simple, silly. And so I'm doing my, my calls and then I get a lead and I go, okay, Joe Doe Brown, and he's not buying for six months or selling for six months. I put all the information I need to know to trigger my brain. I'm going to put the date, the address, whatever else. And I'm going to put that January to June is six months, but I'm going to put that in March or April because I want to call them in half the time. So I'm going to take my little cute box. I'm going to find April and I'm going to put Joe right in April and all January and all February. I'm going to be, I'm going to be putting leads in that I need to follow up on March, April, and May. So when March comes along, March 1st, I'm going to pull a literally a stack of leads out of my little March folder, slide, whatever. And I'm going to have my leads to call. And then wherever they end up going, maybe Joe is not ready still in March. I'm going to put that in towards June because people lie and they're ready half the time that they say. If they say six months, they're probably ready in three. Sometimes they're not lying. But the point is this kept me literally selling 130 homes a year. So you guys can laugh, all you technology people. Um, but literally this box kept my brain in order. It made it simple. Um, I kept note cards in my kitchen counter, in my car, everywhere. So um, if anyone wants to, to have questions about that, email us later, but I just, it's there. Um, and we can answer those questions in our Facebook group. But let's move on to our next subject, unless you guys have questions. Um, let's talk about Judy. They had um, uh, lead trackers we talked about, outbound prospecting. We talked about FISBO's expired, calling your past clients. Let's talk about the pre-qualification process. That was a, a question. A lot of agents, um, they don't take the time to pre-qual and then they're left a little bit upset at the results. So talk about like agents that skip that process because you've coached agents for 20 years. Yeah. Um, talk about what that, that could be in their business. Okay. Well, the first thing I want to say is I want everybody to understand that with your... <laughs> With pre-qualifying, I want you to think about it as not something that disqualifies the appointment. It could, but I want the pre-qualification to be more about you knowing everything you need to know to be prepared to go on the appointment. So the questions in the pre-qual, how much do you owe on the property? When do you want to sell? What if, you know, what if you don't get your price? All of the, because all the scripts are different, but all of those questions that we need to ask can disqualify them or better yet, it allows you to know exactly how you need to prepare. So when you go there, you bring the right material, you bring the right objection handlers, you know what to say. You can call a coach and ask, you know, this listing appointment I'm going on is saying this. And I'm not sure how to handle that when I get there. That way, you know, all of their objections ahead of time. And that's why you always want to ask them, do you, before I come out, do you have, what questions do you have for me? And then if they give you a question, you answer it or tell them you'll handle it at the appointment. You ask them what other, what's the next question you have? Ask them how many, keep asking, what question do you have? What question do you have until they say, nope, that's it. Because you don't want to stop at one objection. You want to know all of their objections if they have them. So for me, the prequal is so important for preparation, not disqualification. And that's a simple way for me to use that. And for me right now, what I'm, how I'm coaching new clients is even if you feel it's a 50, 50 chance, go on the appointment. What else are you doing? Go practice. 
for even myself right now, because the market is the way the market is, I'm going on some that I may not go on a year from now, but I feel like I need to go to consult and I need to go. In fact, I did that the other day to go, went to consult and I got the appointment. I mean, so I got the listing. So don't disqualify because of the, their answers. Like Tina said, a lot of times they lie. So when you sit down with them and you go over the prequal questions, you can say, let's review. Is this still true? Is this, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Because when you're person to person, it's really interesting. Those lies kind of filter away and then they, it's now you're in business with them and you get a little more information. So. Yeah, that is, that is so true. Um, the pre-qualifying process, um, I've, I've got my notebook from Mike Ferry back in the day mm -hmm. and it says, what happens to real estate agents who don't pre-qualify their appointments? They spend a lot of times frustrated with themselves and the clients. They take overpriced listings um, and they take listings for not the right period of time. They work too many non-income non, -produce, non -income producing hours, just wasting your time. Um, and they work at a significantly reduced hourly pay because you're just not prepared. So if you guys want to write this rule down, pre-qualify 100% of your prospects 100% of the time. 100% of the time. A doctor would never walk into your room at the doctor's office without having the nurse pre-qualify you, understand what your needs are, understand what the problem is. So that way the doctor can come in and, and figure out the strategy. So it's just, it's common sense. Um, pre-qualify when you're setting the appointment. So when you've got them on the phone, hey, do you have a quick few minutes? I have a few questions before I come out to see you tomorrow at five, Thursday at four is now a good time so I can better prepare for my appointment. It also remember that pre-qualifying allows you to stand out from the competition. If I'm competing against Judy and she called them and I called them and I'm more willy nilly and I just race out to the property unprepared because that's just the way my world is, but she's called them, she's talked to them, she's asked them questions, she's got them thinking, and then she sends them a presentation by by physical, right? She drops it off before her presentation. She comes in, she's looking sharp, she's in a suit. And the other willy-nilly agent came, hair all frustrated because they just came from another appointment. They're 10 minutes late. Which person do you think is going to get the appointment? Ashley's laughing because she's like, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley's going to love them to death and get it. But the point is, your chances of getting that listing when you come prepared is so much better. And, and that- You don't have to work as hard. You don't have to work as hard because you do the work up front. So um, anybody- anybody. Um, want to speak on maybe a, a time when you didn't pre-qualify and you went to a seller's house and you're like, oh my God, I'm wasting my time. Has anyone uh, ever done that? I, I definitely have done stuff like that very beginning, like of the career. Mm -hmm. um, so this is Trevor. I, for when I first started, this is actually my first freedom builder. So I'm happy to be here. A lot of good stuff, but I know I started calling expired right when I got licensed two years ago. Yeah. And I kid you not the first like two, three appointments I set, I showed up. And just nobody answered the door. And I'm like, what is happening? What am I doing wrong? And it's realizing to take that extra step, ask the right questions to make sure that they have the right expectations for when you show up as well. And kind of make sure that the expectations and future pacing are already in place for when you get there and set the appointment and get ready to actually go over paperwork with them. I love that, Trevor. How long have you been in the business? Um, two years in March. So a couple months will be my two years. And where are you from? I'm in Utah with Judy. Oh, that's right. We, yeah, I, we spoke, didn't Can't we? see him. Mm -hmm. I was just asking, where's your camera? camera? I don't uh, remember. My camera, I'm, I'm right here. We'll see if it works. My, my camera's there you are. Oh, are you at home? That's okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was I having tire it. issues this morning, so I'm at home right now. Okay. <laughs> Welcome, friend, our newest yes. freedom builder. Yay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And the rest of the team is on as well, if they want to cool. say so. Cool. Anybody else want to talk about, you know, I know LaQuesta, you're on here. You've, you've done prospecting before. Who else has like gone out to a house and like want to blow their brains out? Cause they're like, I totally, I, you know, I should have, I went out to a house before and the lady said we were walking through it and she's like, I really wanted you to come out because I wanted you to help me prepare the house. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to be selling it in eight years. <laughs> eight year, I know. Right. I mean, if you would have read my face, I was like, I just got hit by a train like eight years. And I had to spend an hour doing pleasantries. I wanted to turn out the door and go, I got shit to do, you know, but 
I was nice and nothing came of that appointment because I think it was probably seven years ago. So we should probably call her and follow up now. Um, who else wants to expand on that thought? Do you, do you ever feel like you get um, nervous because you've got the appointment and you don't want to mess it up and like keep asking them questions and you're just like, I'll just go out to the appointment and see what happens. Who, who's, who's felt that way? Judy, Trevor. Yep. The people that are making these calls, these are mainly for expired calls, but maybe, you know, we can touch on what about a buyer, you know, going out to meet a buyer. Sometimes it's like, you know, we race out to the property and we're not prepared with the comps. Um, we just talked to one of our top agents, Minda, who's sold 50 homes on our team last year. You know, these are people making hundreds of thousands of dollars. And she said, I never go out to a property to show it without doing a rundown of a little bit of a market analysis. Because when the buyer says, hey, Julie, what do you think this home is worth? And you're like, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. Oh, I'll run some comps later. Why not just be prepared? So that is another way to think about pre-qualification and being prepared. If I'm going to go out and show three houses, I can do a little mini CMA in five minutes and be like, and that's future pacing them. Hey, Judy, do you like this house? Yeah, I like it. Well, what do you think if we offered on it? What, what would you, you know, what would you think we should offer on it if you were to buy it? Well, I don't know. It needs this. Or You're getting into conversation. Well, I ran some comps. Here's what the home is really worth. If you did this to it, it would sell. So you're really like future pacing them to think about moving into the home. Um, all yeah, right. And I think with prequel, I think a lot of people don't do it again, like, like you said, because they're afraid that then it's not going to, it's really not a good, it's not a good appointment. I also, for me, growing up in the Midwest and in a strict Italian family, you know, we were told not to ask personal questions. So the first time I had to ask, how much do you owe on your property? I thought, oh my gosh, I can't ask somebody about their money. Right. You know, so I think a lot of it is we have to get over the fact that there's those rules don't apply to us anymore because we are the professional. Like Tina said, we're like the doctor. We have permission now to ask those personal questions, whether they've given it to us or not. So that's a big, I think a big one for a lot. Well, at least it was for me. I'm thinking it's for a lot of I, my coaching clients. That's what they say a lot. And it's really how you ask like that? the question. Oh, go right. ahead. Right. Um, yeah. So this is, this is huge, especially because you guys know, I work mostly with new agents and they're always nervous about going to listing appointments and they're just so excited that they got something like, and they don't want to cancel because then they feel like I didn't have a successful week or a day or whatever. And so I remember when I first started with Freedom Builders and Tina showed us her, her listing presentation, her script book, the pre-qualifying and, um, and we had the same conversation, like, don't wait, you know, and she would say, I would book five and I would cancel two. And so when you have that expectation, I'm just going to cancel two because they're not qualified. And then I'm not spending time pulling comps, getting dressed, driving there, like all that time that I could have just gotten on the phone and called another hundred people. And at some point when you're new, it's like, I'll just go and it's practice. I know Judy, you mentioned that sometimes it's good, but then after when you're doing volume, when you're doing that much, you're just like, this is a waste of my time. And, and one of Tina's favorite things that she says is when you generate, you don't have to tolerate. So this is a lead generation problem when you're worried about canceling appointments because you don't have enough people. And, it, and that's worse because then you're going in with commission breath and you you have to like, this person has to sign and they may not be the right people to sign. They're not super motivated. And so again, it all kind of goes back to that being consistent over time, like Judy was talking about that Tina always talks about too. It's like, when you know you're gonna be doing this every single day consistently, like you can trust that, okay, just because it's been canceled, that's good. That's kind of living in abundance. Like my people are out there. Same with Ashley and I have the same personality type. Like. I can do cold calls. I'm good at it. I hate it. <laughs> I'm more of a relationship builder. And, but if even for me, like being, I can walk in, I've been in sales for a long time. I can walk in and just BS them. Like I can, like I can say some stuff. I have enough knowledge BS now it. that they just trust whatever I say, but that's after several years and over a hundred deals. So it's like, I know what to say, but when you're newer, when you haven't done that many deals, it's like, 
you're nervous on what to say, but the more you practice, the more you pull comps, the more you do it correctly, then you show up as a professional. And that pre-qualification separates you from hair on fire 1099, right? Because then you're like, I'm a business owner. I'm, you're hiring me to be a professional. And when you're asking all these pre-qualifying questions and they've given you that information, you're building trust. That process is building trust in you. If they're not even willing to answer those questions for you, then the likelihood that they're going to sign a contract is much lower. So it's kind of that entire process of building. You're the one, I don't want to have these conversations again. I don't want to talk to another agent about this, you know, and then, then you're really listening for the motivation so that when you're there to talk to them, you don't have to go and go through this part of the script. You already know, right? Just talk about the things they're motivated on. So it's really pre prepping you to walk in and like hit on the points that are really important to them. Because a lot of times when you're newer, you're selling on things that aren't even important to that person. Like you're just talking about stuff that they don't even care about, which is even worse. So if you can just walk in and say, boom, 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 and get the agreement and then stop talking. <laughs> And they're like, yes, we want to work with you. And then people try and talk themselves out of the job. They keep on talking, like, stop talking. You have to ask those questions. They already said yes. Sign the listing agreement and get out, <laughs> whatever. So it's all part of the process. And, and it is scary. It, the fear is they're going to cancel. But if you shift the mindset to, I want them to cancel because I, I want a closing ratio of 100% or 80%. So that's knowing your numbers. Like if, I, if I'm showing up at this person's house, the chance of them signing a contract with me is 80 to 100% because I've, I, I'm not going there to waste my time. I already know what they want. I know exactly how to approach them with the different personality types. Like you have to mirror and match when you're having these conversations. You can listen to what they're saying when they're responding to you, how they're responding. You can tell what kind of personality they the personality type they are based on how they answer your questions. And that preps you to be able to be who they need you to be to, to actually close the deal. And yeah. then I always tell people when you're at a listing appointment or a buyer's appointment, it's like dating. That's the best it's ever going to be. <laughs> that meeting, that's a first date. So like, that's the best it's ever going to be. Even if they're all BFF day one, there's going to be problems in a transaction. There's 293 steps or something in a transaction, a hundred percent guarantee something's going to go wrong. So if you're not establishing authority from the listing presentation that you're the boss of this transaction, I am the project manager. I'm the one who's going to be coordinating. Like you can trust me. And if you're just like saying whatever they want to hear to get them to sign, then when it comes time to maybe do like a list, you know, price reduction, they don't, they don't respect you. They're not listening to, they don't see you as the authority. And so it all starts back, 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 back from the tone of the voice when you're making the phone call, being willing to do the prequal. It's, it's the qualifying sale. Why should I allow you to pay me to help you? Versus please, 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 please let me be the one to sell this house. And so it's all like a, like a total mindset shift, which is hard when you're new, but it's like, that's what script practice is for, for sure. Yeah, no, I love that. There's so many great points in that. I hope you guys picked up. Um, Charity, thank you. When I met you, you were, you had like five jobs. She was like an Uber driver, a mom. She worked at Keller Williams, sold one home. And I was like, okay, we need to, you were my first recruit to Freedom Builders actually. And yep, last the team. Year, yeah, last year she did nine million dollars in business. Um, which how many units is that? Trent was late to. Uh, it's a little tough for us because I have an anniversary year, which is mid year, and then I have a like short answer year, charity. So it's a high but high. I do I know I did my numbers and we Judy we and I were like, okay, wrap it up, charity. No, <laughs> no, we increased our um price point like by double. So I we did that. less transactions. Well, that's right. You went two hundred to four hundred, which yeah, is yeah. So that was a huge thing. Um, that we wanted to focus on. And then I, I took a step it. back this year to focus on my health too. So it was a great year. Thank you, love. You're awesome. Um, but yeah, she's right. The disc, you're, you're, you're understanding personalities. You're seeing who you're going to, you know, be talking to. Um, so the prequal we've exhausted is very important. Quick answer, Ashley, quick something. What do you got? Because I want to go not really on the free fall, but it was kind of something that she brought up. Like, I think newer agents, if there are agents on the call, it's like, we want, I, I'm one of the people still, I want to know everything. We want to know everything. And, and you said something like, you know, you fake it till you make it when you're going out with these people. But at the same time, I've actually multiple clients recently have said, 
you know, we really trusted you because you didn't just give us an answer. You said, let me check on that. Let me find out. Let me, I'm not sure about that, but let me get back to you. I think we're so scared to let people think we don't know what we're doing that we are just giving them an answer that doesn't make sense. And then they don't trust you. So I don't know. I thought that was just like key and that people actually had given me that feedback recently because I don't just say, I mean, yes, at the beginning, you're like, oh, I just want to get through here. Just be, you know, as confident as I can. But just think about that. We don't know everything about every neighborhood. And we let them know, I'm going to check on that for you. Let me, and the way you say it, you don't have to know everything. Just give them that confidence that you're not just going to give them an answer to sell a house. I love it. I love it. That's great. Hey, Tina, great. I know you want to move on, but I want to do one more thing about prequel. No, please okay. go ahead. Go ahead. Um, especially for new agents or anybody who's not doing this, make sure when you are going on an appointment with an SOI, you also do this prequel. And I always coach it. And I say to a, to a family or a friend, I say, look, I, I have some questions I need to ask you before I come out. I know it's going to seem odd because we're friends because we're family. I want to start out right from the beginning, treating you like any other client. You're going to get top-notch service and this is part of it. So is it okay if I ask you these questions, even if I might know some of them that way you, you have no surprises with them also. And they see you're, you're not just expecting to get their business. You're earning their business. That is like, I'm so glad you brought that up. We literally had this in our meeting a couple of weeks ago. And two of my agents did not prequal their friends and a past mm -hmm. client. And Judy brought up an amazing point because you say exactly what she says, you know, like, I'm going to do this. Do you mind? I want to demonstrate my, my process. So, you know, that when I do meet a stranger, I do meet a referral that you give me, you know, the exact yes. process yes. that I'm going to take with everyone else. So you're, you're demonstrating to your friend, your past client, how professional you are. So I, I just love that. Um, Diane, Diane has a question. Diane, unmute yourself. You're muted, my dear. Diane, I don't know if she's been up there a while. Maybe she forgot us. She doesn't know how to unmute. <laughs> Could be one or the other. All right, anybody else have a question while Diane is trying to unmute herself? Anybody, anybody? All right. Um, so, oh. You did it. Okay, good. Sorry, I've never done Zoom on my phone before, so this was all interesting. <laughs> I figured um, it was I user error. I a comment, yes. which is, even when you, it, it could be your best friend. It could be your grandmother. I mean, it could be your mother. They're not in real estate. So you have to set the bar so they know. You don't know what they're thinking. You don't know what they're, what they think you do. So you have to set the bar, whether, again, it's your mother or anyone, you always have to set that bar with your expectations, what you're going to do for your client, because they now become your client. And if you don't set the bar, you're going to run into trouble. I love that. I love that. It is so, all these little nuances, all these little steps, you know, Judy and I, it's so fun to, to see that our training was like, it's like exactly the same and it, and, and it's, it is so refreshing to know that it's still in my brain. Like I don't, you know, do this every single day anymore, but it's there. Once it's ingrained, treat this like a business and you guys will have fruit forever, but you can't not practice these things. There's a system and a sequence. So let's just the last thing, because I'll be so proud if we get through all four points um, that you all have asked about. The question was, what's your listing process? What is your listing process? So everybody has a different listing process, but Judy, I would, I would love for you to take that because, you know, a lot of people have always heard me talking about mine. What is your listing process, Judy? Okay. Well, it's funny because my assistant and I, we were just going over this because I'm putting together some training series classes type of things. And right. so, you know, you do it so automatically now that I had to, had to think about it. So I think the biggest thing is, is you get that appointment and then you keep prospecting first thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Don't stop. <laughs> don't stop. You're doing it yourself. Then after you're done or whenever your preparation time is. And I always, one of the rules that I've had as a coach is you should have anything that you know that you have coming today, the next day, get it done before you leave. 
Okay. So I was, so you, obviously what you're going to do is you're going to pull the information. You're going to pull the information on the property. You're going to get the tax records and you're going to do a quick CMA. I can do a CMA. I have, I have only been in this market a, a few years. Um, I don't even really, I'm geographically challenged, <laughs> but you know, you can pull a, you can put a, pull a CMA together quickly if you know real estate. So CMA, right? Then, and I've usually pre-qual on the call that I've made the appointment. I get it, I get it done. I'm not calling them back because it's hard to get them back. I just pre-qualify them and then I know I can do my work. Um, I'm going to send them out a, a, a pre-list packet that's going to include a, a bio about myself, my track record. Um, I'm going to, I don't have all my stuff here in my mind. Um, obviously all of the contracts that they're going to sign so that they can review them. And then um, I have a file for them. I have a file for myself and I, I go out and I do a listing presentation. I mean, it is, it is canned. It's a little, it's, I think the thing to remember is when you're new, you should be using that script as close to verbatim as you can. Now for myself, I use it verbatim, but it's different because it's just, it's just what I do. And I wish I could explain that. Um, but boy, the first couple, two, three years, it was verbatim. I brought the book in with me. I practically, and I, I would tell people I had a, an outline I was going to follow and that's how I coach it. I don't want to miss anything because there's a lot of information and we'll get off track. We can get, you know, and it would happen, especially if you were with an expressive, right? They're, they get off track and you say, gosh, I'm so glad I have my outline. We need to get back on track. I and then that. I would, again, because of the prequal, I would have objections. I would write out things at the close that I knew that I might have to. Now, if I handled my appointment well, a lot of times those objections went away but some of those objections always stay, or I may not have done as good of a job. And then I've got my thought out answers so that I can be better prepared when they're saying, well, what about this? I can turn to my page and say, well, I knew you were going to ask that because you, you, we talked about it on the phone. This is my answer. I didn't hide things from people. I let them see that I prepared. So that's how I do my listing presentation. That is, you know, how many people are afraid to bring their scripts in and meet with a seller? I mean, everybody should be raising their hand because you're like, I don't want to feel like I'm stupid. Like, I'm, I don't know what to say, but I mean, here you're talking to a top producer who's coaching people, bring the darn thing in. You look more prepared. And what I did and what I did is I didn't actually bring the book. And I think I say that as I bring the book, but what I would do is I would almost like a doctor's check-in sheet. Yeah. I would have it and I would have the blanks, but I would have filled in because it's part of my prequal. So when I'm doing the prequal, right. I'm filling out my presentation. Right. And it's so, like a clipboard, you know, or a little clipboard. You know? <laughs> exactly. And so when I go in, they know it's for them. It's got their name. It's got their address. It's got their information. And it's my, and I even say to them, Hey, you know, I did that I, we talked on the phone. This is like the doctor. I did all that preliminary work a nurse would have done. Now we're going to get down to how to fix your problem. I love that. And when Judy was saying, I just don't know how to explain it, that the script becomes you. Her and I use the exact same scripts. We could do two presentations and you're going to, you're going to hear two different scripts, but they're, they're ours. They're, we're saying the same thing because we've internalized it. We're not robotic anymore. And that's why I think in the beginning, people are script resistant because nobody wants to, to feel like they're pushing against something that's not them and they resist it and go, this doesn't work, but give it some time, do it over repetition, right? Um, thank you, Judy. That That is great. Yep. Trevor. Yeah, just real quick, just want to add. So Judy has also coached yeah, me and my sister and our team for the last couple of years. Um, but something I even just learned from her just to expand on what she was saying is um, you do have to really like kind of memorize those scripts. But me being an expressive driver, sometimes I lack either empathy or patience or both at the exact same time. And that can be rough. So the really the next step is understanding that their objections are just a belief they have. Right. And it's not necessarily like memorizing the scripts perfectly, but you need to know what to say so you can get better at how you're saying it. And that's something that I've really been working on is like, I know what to say, but how I'm saying it is really important because it might come off as either 
con like combative or like you don't know what you're saying if it doesn't flow correctly. So you do really, it's important to memorize those scripts, but like how you're using the scripts and verbalizing them is also like the next step in the process. And that's something that she's definitely helped us work on, so. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's very good at her job. That's why I'm just so honored that she's on here with us giving back. Um, you know, knowing what to say is huge. There's a book called What to Say. Um, I think it's a fantastic book if you want to just expand. But going back to even the prequel, Judy, when you were saying, you know, you have to ask all the questions, you can't skip. The one question um, I remember I had a hard time asking was, how much do you owe on the property? And my coach said, you know, soften it, soften it, tell them why you're asking that. And so now we'll say, hey, Judy, I'm going to actually fill out a net sheet for you so you can see, you know, what you're going to end up with at the end of the day. May I, may I ask, do you have one mortgage or two on this property? What's your first? What's your second? You're just, you're not like, what do you owe on the property? Like, a, you know, like a command, you're softening it and, and you're asking those little, you know, you're making little changes to the script to help you um, make it your own. So um, I hope you guys got a lot out of today. There's a lot of uh, great links. It went fast. Yeah, please, please. No, I said that went, fast. went fast. Oh, I was like, I thought you said I have a, a something real fast. No. Um, it did go fast. And, and the goal is, you know, we want you guys to come on every week. We're going to have, you know, Judy will be here. I will be here. All the top agents. We want to hear from everybody, but we really want to hear what you guys are struggling with because a mastermind is all of us pitching in. Um, so I'm glad that you felt it was a great call. There's a lot of great links. Allison uh, and Brandon will put them in our Freedom Builders um, uh, guides. So you guys have all those links from today's calls and invite your friends and go off and prosper and get better. And uh, yeah, I'm just glad you guys came today. So Thank have you. an amazing week. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye.